The NATSIPs, or National Safety Standards for Invasive Procedures, were written by NHS England in 2015 with the help of a number of other bodies involved in invasive care, including the Royal Colleges, the GMC, uh, uh, and every body you can possibly imagine. What the NATSIPs aim to do is to improve safety and learn from never events and near misses. They want us to standardise, harmonise and educate across invasive specialties to create a memory and learning so that patient care is safer. What the NATSIPs also ask us to do is to write LOCSIPs, which are local standards for invasive procedures based on the NATSIPs, uh, which inform our daily practice at our trust. At Bart's Health, we've written LOCSIPs with all the specialties involved in invasive care to provide a very strong framework and process for us to provide safer care. I know that if I or a member of my family was having an invasive procedure, I'd want to think that these standards were being followed. Let's go and speak to some of the frontline teams and find out what the standards mean to them. The idea of this is to really change the culture in the organisation and it's not only changing the, it's changing the culture to a learning one rather than we hate, we hate checklists, we hate various things, actually it's changing the way to people looking positively at this. This is here to help us and not just to help us, it's to help the patients at the end of the day and make a really big difference to them. These standards are not just about what the team does, it's about what the organisation does. The organisational standards support the team. Induction, team training, scheduling, staffing, handover, all these things go together to provide us with a system where we can provide safer care for our patients. I think we're getting to a stage now where people aren't using the steps of NATSIPS to say we've done it and to follow the process. The, the NATSIPs are describing our, safe, our safer and improving safety culture. NATSIPs was not only about a checklist, it was very much a culture change. Uh, it was about empowering the staff to speak out at all the different stages of the patient pathway if something was not correct. I think doing complex surgeries in this increasing busy environment, what we practice in, it is a teamwork. It doesn't rely on one individual, it's this teamwork. And the checklist, I like it the most because it simplifies the whole process, makes the team member valued in what we do. Each one has got a dedicated role in the aspect of the checklist. So I like it because it makes it a lot simpler. Everybody is valued as a part of the team. The new Nazis checklist is well designed, is organized and well structured. It's been done with a lot of work, research and collaboration. Going through the checklist itself, Ten years ago when we started with the checklist, that was very helpful in refining the project, the process itself, but the current one is even better because it also includes the whole care of the patient handed out to the end of the ward. I think there's always been, whenever you bring in new things, there's always a bit of a tension between uh, increasing levels of checks and that people might perceive slows things down, but actually when these things are done well, they only take 30 odd seconds and that in the context of a two hour procedure is nothing. Uh, and when things are done well and done right first time, you save time um, and you improve care, you make care safer um, for the rest of the day and in the long term. Do they put a mark, an arrow, where they're yes. going to operate? Yes, okay. Um, so one of the uh, new changes is the way we're marking patients. Uh, this has a few implications. Um, what we're trying to do is standardise across specialties, so whether you're in doing interventional procedures such as cardiology or radiology or normal operations in theatres, we've standardised the way that patients need to be marked. All superficial um, procedures need to be marked even if it's obvious. Uh, another big change is that operations on internal organs, if the organ itself has laterality, so it's a left or a right, then we're saying that you need to mark the patient even if the incision is midline. I'm excited about NAPSITS because it is build, building teamwork within the theatre. So for example now, we don't start a team brief without everyone being there. And that seems like, you know, well that's quite obvious, but actually that's really transformed the way. We all share information together, everyone knows about the patient, Someone says we're, we're low on this stock or this not, isn't working and we can all risk assess it and decide what we do as a team. We get to know ourselves, we tell our name and what we do. So we get to know who's our team and it has 
created a better communication and um, also good teamwork. So the MODS disciplinary team having a really strong brief at the beginning of the day and a good debrief at the end helps to ensure the team have a clear plan for the day and then discuss what went well and what went uh, what went differently that they need to improve on next time. Okay, good. Right, good. That's all good. Should we all get started? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Thanks yeah. so much, everybody. Thank you. I know you feel like you've had lots of checks, but this is the last check before anesthesia. It's called yeah, yeah, sign in. So can you confirm your name? As an orthopaedic surgeon, uh, I, I'm very aware that nationally we have a problem in that the wrong implant is being implanted in, in a few cases, but it does happen. And we've learned lessons from incidents nationally and locally that this cannot keep continuing. And one of the most important and completely avoidable things is putting in a wrong device, a wrong prosthesis. Um, and um, we take it for granted that we always know the right bit of equipment and that we're very experienced, we do things quite routinely. But we do know that very occasionally people make mistakes and they're tragic because they're wholly avoidable and with a few simple checks you can prevent putting in the wrong device. The implant safety check takes about 30 seconds and we're all working under pressure with complexity of operations and complexity of patients. To, to put the wrong implant in, unfortunately, we've seen does happen and can happen even with everyone in the room thinking that they're doing the right thing. I can recall an incident a number of years ago when we had a never event when the wrong type of stent was put into a patient um, and unfortunately that caused significant harm to them. Uh, and in that context, it's absolutely crucial that we take time out from the operation and the rush of the, 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 the normal wanting to get through to the end of the case to, to stop and process that we definitely have the correct implant. I mean, you've got lots of different areas that do invasive procedures. Historically, we've always concentrated on surgery and theatres, but there's so many similarities between surgery, between interventional radiology, cardiology, um, and even procedures on the medical wards or in ED. Um, and they've all got similarities and there's no reason why the same high standards that we've you know, historically applied to surgery and not these other interventional areas should be extended to some of the more occasional procedures we do. Um, critical care do a lot of invasive procedures outside of theatres. So we place lines, we do tracheostomies, we intubate patients, we put chest drains in and our teams go to the clinical areas like the wards and they do those invasive procedures there as well. So it's important that we have a standardised approach that's really safe um, to reduce harm to our patients. A little more than a year ago we had an incident of a retained wire after the insertion of the line and that has generated the need for a review of the service. These measures have uh, increased our, our confidence of doing a safe procedure basically in the PIC uh, service. Um, since that incident and since us adopting all these tools and all the changes in our service, we have not had any incidents at all of any retained wire. Having a baby does involve some invasive procedures. Fundamentally, at the core of everything we do is safety. Um, and we want the women to have the best experience possible. So steps we have taken in maternity is to standardise and harmonise and work collaboratively across maternity and surgery throughout Bart's Health to look at um, safety procedures that we can do um, and one of them is our swab count and our instrument count in the room, um, which I know happens in theatres. So we do that uh, with two people. We need to give respect to this accounting procedure process and allow the scrub nurse and the circulating nurse to count it in a quiet place, in a concentrating atmosphere. The sign out is an important step because it marks the end of the intervention period of that patient's care. It allows the team to come together to summarise the surgical episode and to make a plan for the patient's ongoing care both in the recovery area and, and beyond. It helps us ensure that all the checks have been done at the end of the procedure, uh, be it things like um, checking that the specimens have been labelled, the operation notes have been com fully completed, um, the plan from the anaesthetic side as well as from the surgical side have all been communicated prior to the patient leaving the room. Since the sign-out became start of, part of standard practice, I've noticed that 
there is a clear understanding of the intervention that the patient has undergone. There's a clear understanding of key aspects to hand over, things such as blood loss. And I think that there is a more, there's better attention to detail regarding the post-operative plan for the patient. Team debriefing is, is shifting that conversation from a reactive to a proactive position so that we're thinking forward to anticipate error before it's even occurred. So it's avoiding error, not just about trapping and mitigating error as it happens. So it, it, it's putting you into a, a better position to tackle problems before they even occur. It's an opportunity for the team to reflect on what's happened during the day. It's also an opportunity to learn from any um, good things, bad things, and also to, I think, look forward to planning in the future for things they could do better. Yeah, so teams who've embraced debrief always perform better because they're, they're planning ahead, they're thinking about what they might do differently, they're having open, honest conversations with each other, and it means that they're not afraid to talk about what they'd like to do differently to make for a better team performance. So our patients need to be reassured that our teams are able to have those challenging conversations with each other about what they need to do differently next time they come together to make for a better patient experience. We have to make sure that all the disciplines involved in cut lab cases have not seems as part of their induction. Um, I think it's useful for um, any newcomers into theatres, whether they're staff or whether they're just visiting or they happen to be students. And as junior doctors, we'll all get trained and uh, that will be part of our induction uh, at the Bart's Heart Centre in order to provide uh, safe patient care. So team training is really important to make this work because this is just a tool and it isn't going to keep patients safe on its own. The team need to understand how they use that tool and understand that they're all part of keeping our patients safe, that everyone in that room has a role to play for watching each other and Human Factors tells us that it's not just one person or one process that's going to block and trap error, it's the whole team working together. You use NADSIPS, if you like, as the spearhead for a movement around changing the culture in theatres and in other areas where important interventions happen, including cardiology, interventional cardiology, interventional radiology, to make sure that every interventional procedure we do, wherever it is in the organisation will be as safe as we can possibly make it. It's telling us how we can support the theatre team to run a good list with support from scheduling, from site and from the team management and team planning outside the theatre. Shows we've learnt a lot from our past events. We tried a, a long time here to, to get buy-in from everyone, to get everyone to give us their thoughts that we've done this as a team uh, and hopefully we'll come up with something that works for everyone.